course, I've seen farmers here who farm like six hectares of groundnut. If you look at their capacity in terms of finance, you can easily say that they don't have money. How, how many people use hundreds of thousands of dollars to look for a visa just to show up? Imagine you take that money mm. and you invest it here. I didn't spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars here, but I know this worth hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of what of it is here, that I'm 100% sure of that yeah. one. You can keep this for two years without problem. This here, I can leave this here for two years, it will not have problem. I was having like 400 sheep, you know, and then at the time I sold out like 100 female sheep. 100 female? Yeah, yeah. Because when I look at the feed we have, mm -hmm. I knew that I cannot feed all my sheep for the whole year round. It, it, it went up to 18 bucks a day. So you, you spend it like $18,000? Yeah! Oh. So it's all about volume. For the Jarrah's farm, what is next is to become one of the biggest maize farmers in the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, 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 comp we compact it put some salt on it and some molasses, and then we, we cover it with, you know, it's an opportunity. So when there, whenever there is a problem, if you solve it, you make money. A kilo of maize at the moment is $36 a kilo, you know? So imagine, you know, having like 100 hectares, 200 hectares of maize. You ask anybody in our neighborhood, they will say to you, ah, these people, when they don't farm, they don't eat. You know, I want to have 1,000 sheep, minimum. Definitely, I will encourage people to invest into farming. You know, whether you are a Gambian, you are a friend of the Gambia, come and invest into farming. I think it's enough of the complaints. You know, we should do something about it, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. I believe in one thing. Nobody's gonna solve your problem apart from yourself. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Jalo, commonly known as EJ. I'm the proprietor of the Jalo's farm. Mm -hmm. Mainly what we do, we are into seed breeding. Uh, this farm is just, uh, one of the things we realize that we need to do to solve our problems that is the feeding problem. Mm -hmm. So this farm is purely meant for our animal feed. Okay, you also uh, you spoke about uh, sheep breeding. Uh, tell us about uh, the, the sheep breeding thing. Yeah, you know, um, basically what I started doing was sheep breeding. Mm -hmm. That was the whole idea. You know, I wanted to breed sheep to make a difference in the in the sheep market mm -hmm. because ninety five percent of the sheep we eat in the garment is imported from Senegal, Mali, and uh, Multini. Okay. So I saw a problem and I, uh, I chose to go in there and, and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. But then I realized feed is really, really expensive okay. and um, so the only solution I need to do is to start farming. And this is the first year, normally we do farm some grass. Last year um, I thought about the maize silage mm -hmm. uh, because most of the people in the world who are into sheep breeding, they uh, farm their own feed. So this is our pilot project for the uh, maize silage farm, and it came out very good, alhamdulillah. And last year, uh, it was a wake-up call, because we used to buy like granular head uh, for $250 a bag, and then last year it went up to $1,500 a bag. So you cannot be buying that kind of uh, feed and feed your animals and you want to sell, you can't sell them. So the only way to solve that problem is to uh, farm our own. Okay, that's how you come up with, with, with this farm. Tell yeah, us about yeah. uh, these maize varieties that you have. It's a six hectare farm okay. and we have like three different farms here. And one of them is the NZ and the other one is LZ maize. Uh, the other one is uh, the early toy that was given to me by the government. They give me a hectare worth of uh, seeds and those are the maize we have here. How, how do you acquire such land? In this? No, this land does not belong to me. It belongs to a very good friend of mine who gave me the opportunity. So how do you think this farm itself is going to help? This farm is really going to make a huge difference mm. because the amount of feed that you have in here is, if I were to buy this amount of feed, it's going to be a lot of money. And then uh, farming and uh, this uh, maize is going to make a huge difference in terms of the amount of money I'm going to spend in, in feeding my animals. Uh, do you have any plans of uh, doing maize farming, not only just for feeding, but for maybe a business purpose maybe in the future? Yeah, yeah honestly, that, that, that's one thing I'm uh, told. You know, this maize farm, if mm. I'm honest to you, when we started, it was all about um, learning. This was a learning, it's a lower learning thing for me. It was a pilot project. Okay. And I've, I've write down every boot I spent into this farm. Mm -hmm. It's all been written down. Okay. So after this season, I'm going to analyze everything. Mm -hmm. You know, value the, 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 the maize, value the silage and everything. Mm -hmm. And then see exactly 
what can be done with this kind of business. And then next year, inshallah, looking at this farm right now, definitely next year my intention is to go bigger and mechanize the farming as well so that I can farm for my sheep and then farm for the population as well. That's so, it. So can anyone uh, do this kind of, do you need money to do this kind of business? Yeah, you, you, it depends on the size you want to go. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, like I said, I didn't know much about this thing when I started. So I, I just went in there, I was working with some people who uh, encouraged me to do it. So my whole target was to have some uh, feed for my sheep. Okay. But then when I started, I knew that whatever you do, if you don't have records, you cannot say much about it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started um, uh, writing down every single good wood I, I spent. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, at the end of the harvest, I will know exactly how much money I spent and then I will value all the animal feed I have from the farm and then I will see the difference. And that way, uh, I'll be able to know how profitable it is and then I will share that to the, the public, inshallah. Okay, who, who, who do you think can uh, do something like this? Do you, do you need that much money? You know, in this, I've seen farmers here who definitely, I will easily say they don't have money. Okay. I think it's the determination, the commitment, and the know-how. Okay. Because I've seen farmers here who farm like six hectares of groundnut. You know, it's not in here, it's somewhere in the, in the surroundings and stuff, in it. You know, and if you look at their capacity in terms of finance, you can easily say that they don't have money. So meaning, uh, you know, to do agriculture, you don't actually need that huge capital to start. It depends on how big you want to start. How big you want yeah. to start. Listen, okay, let's say I buy one donkey. Okay. A donkey costs like less than $10,000. Okay. And then I buy the, 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 the machine and everything. Let's say $30,000, $40,000. Okay. Buy, buy the, the, the seeds and everything. You know, you're talking of under $50,000 for a start. Okay. And that donkey, if you utilize that donkey well, the amount of acres you'll be farming, Give you more than more than fifty thousand dollars. So you have a starting point. You know how, how many people use hundreds of thousands of dollars to look for a visa just to travel. Just Imagine you take that money yeah. and you invest it here. I didn't spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars here, but I know this worth hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of water feed is here. That I'm hundred percent sure of that one. Yeah, yeah. You know that I'm hundred percent sure of that one. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay, it's the amount of uh, feed that you have here. How long do you think this is going to serve you as a farmer in your farm? You know, that I cannot estimate right now, okay. unless when I uh, silage it, mm -hmm. and then I see the amount of silage I have, then I can have come up with an estimate. I know it cannot serve me the whole year, you know, because the amount of feed I need depends on the amount of sheep I have. You know, it's all uh, related to the amount of sheep, you know, sheep I have, and, um, you know. So, but this thing will help me a lot. It will um, help me from not selling some of the female sheep that I normally sell. Mm -hmm. You know, that way I can, I can be able to keep them all because uh, the feeding will be much cheaper than what I was meant to pay for it. You know, a kilo of this feed will cost me far more cheaper than a kilo of feed if I have to pay for it. How many, how many uh, sheep do you have right now, Japan? Yeah, you know, last year, actually this year, you know, the feeding we were, we were sucked, we were surprised with the price of feed. Year before last, a bag of uh, granite hay was costing $250 a bag yes. all year round. Okay. And this year, when it started, when the uh, season started, it started at $300. I was saying, ah, man, it will come down a bit. Just give it a chance, you know. Okay. And they went to $350. And then to $400. I was saying to myself, man, hang on, maybe, you know, people are not selling their granite hay. So, That's right. And I heard it was $500. I said to my boy, Let, let's start buying. <laughs> <laughs> so we start buying. Mm -hmm. But because it was twice the price of what I was budget, uh, budgeted for. Budgeted. For me, it, I was expecting like, for it to go like 275, 250, 250 275, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I was thinking of. So I went up to $500 a bag. You know, I realized that this year, I need to do something about it. I was having like 400 sheep, you know, and then at the time, and I, I reduced, uh, uh, I sold out like 100 female sheep. 100 female? Yeah, yeah. Because when I look at the feed we have, I knew that I cannot feed all my sheep for the whole year. And then it's no point having a uh, lot of sheep and they're dying of hunger and stuff. You know, so I decided to reduce it by 100, 100 sheep. Okay. So that's why this year I said, I have to farm. I don't want to take chances, whether it's going to be cheap or it's going to be expensive, I don't want to think about it. All I need to do is I make sure that I farm, know that I have my feed, you know. 
So that's how I came up to this idea. Right now at the, at the farm we have about 250 sheep. 250? Yeah, After yeah, selling? Yeah. No, no, after selling 100 female ones, and then, uh, you know, at Johnny Thomas, I was having like 400 sheep at the farm. Johnny okay. Thomas. Johnny Thomas. Yeah, but you know, I, I sold the rams and stuff, Johnny Thomas and stuff. Then I sold 100 females extra as well, because feeding went up to 1,500 a bag, a bag of ground of hay. Can you believe that? You know? A bag of a ground of hay? Yeah, went up to $1,500 this. At the moment, at the market, it's $900 per bag. So you see, is this a problem that if you so how many how many bags do you consume? Do, do, do this uh, it it, it, it went up to eighteen bags a day. So you you spend it like eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> that is that is a lot of you money. Know, so that that's something that I didn't budget for. You no, know, even not even talking about budgeting in, but that's extra expensive. Exactly. You, you cannot afford that. No, you can't. Every day you cannot spend eighteen thousand dollars. And, and that, that's that's excluding the, the wheat bran, the maize, and all the stuff, you know. So it was really, really hard. that's why I said to myself, hang on a minute, you know, what I need to do, I need to reduce the sheep. Reduce the sheep. Yeah. So I reduced all the sheep that we are not having lard and blood in them. You know, I'm doing my crossbreeding. Okay. I took everything that got no lard and blood in them and I kept everything that got lard and blood in them. You know, and then uh, after the Tobas, uh, you know, all the, all the rams we are sold, Alhamdulillah, I got some good customers, they bought all the rams. Yeah. And then as I'm starting, I'm starting again. Start. So I'm, I'm starting again. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. So that's why this year I said, whatever happened, I have to farm. And this farm, I used to use, need to use it also as a learning curve. Selling a hundred sheep uh, from your farm, how does it make you feel? <laughs> I, know, I feel real bad, man. Yeah, honestly, it's like, because um, these are sheep that I've been working on for years. Some of these sheep, even their grandma were, uh, were born at the farm and stuff. That made me feel real bad. I got no choice, but it was real bad, you know, definitely. That, that is, it was like, it was one of the saddest things I have to do at the farm. Yeah, honestly. Because but, to reduce 100, 100, 100 is too much. Yeah, I know, I know, but I have to do it. It's, it's a decision I have to make. You know, I, 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 I will go bankrupt if I wanted to feed all the farm mm. like it was mm. um, uh, or mm. I will have them stop, mm. you know, which is not the, a, good, um, a good thing to do. So it's either I reduce them or I'll, I'll go bankrupt and then or <laughs> I stop the sheep. Those are the two options, no other option. Because I mean, last year, I don't know, from nowhere, you know, you know, granite, granite hair just started to shoot up from nowhere. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is too much. Yeah, for no way, you know. And, 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 and trust me, even now, today, the price is $900. You cannot feed your sheep with $900 a bag. And then you want to sell it into the market. Which market you want to sell it? What, 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 what could have made that decision, change your mind on that decision? Um, if only somebody give me free feed. <laughs> which, which, you know, is like, is, is, is as, um, uh, let me just say it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Time. But there's no one's gonna give me free feed anyway. So, you know, that that was the only option I have, you know. So how yeah. how is the struggle like for sheep breeders in this country regarding the feed? Not only you, but now everybody is struggling. Okay. But you know the problem is when there is a problem, you can either complain mm -hmm. or you can do something about it. Okay. So me instead of complaining, mm -hmm. I choose to do something about it. Because nobody's gonna solve my problem for me. I'm the only person who's gonna solve my problem for me. So that, that's why you know I, I I I choose to farm. You know. So now that I got the knowledge about maize farming, I'm not gonna I'm just gonna just not gonna farm because of my animals. No, I'm gonna farm because I want to be as a business as well. As a business. As exactly. Well. So, so as you have the land. Exactly. And it's nah. rainy season. So. I, 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 just, I just hope somebody will give me some cheap land somewhere else. You know? I don't care where it is anyway. <laughs> Because I, I need I need to have a land of my own for me to be able to continue these things, you know. Because okay. you cannot keep borrowing uh, land all the time, you know. It's no guarantee, you know. And then uh, you need a real big space to do it as well. So hopefully, I need to go to up country and see where somebody can help me with some cheap land, in it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So you need to purchase your own land. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, to... yeah. Because uh, what, I'm, what, what I intend to do now is to do it as a business, like I'm doing with this sheep. And you know, the sheep farm, the thing is, it's not about me, it's about me, my children, my grandchildren, and I'm trying to build something that will, uh, be, that will last. Last. So, I, when I, when I, whatever I do, I don't think about myself and stuff, I think about generations. 
And with this thing, I think I can think about generations as well. Because I always start having the passion for this thing. So when I started, it was, was just like, um, go and make some feed for your animals. But now I love coming here, you know, yeah, <laughs> I enjoy yeah. coming here. Why did you choose maize? Because uh, there's an option for you to, as far as you are buying groundnut hay, why not farm groundnut instead of maize? Yeah, you know, you know, I did groundnut hay before. I used to, I used to do some groundnut farming, you know, mm. at my, uh, somewhere around my farm and stuff. Mm. What I realized about groundnut farming is, you know, the amount of space you farm with granite. The amount of granite here you will have. If you put maize there, you can have like four times of that thing or five times. Oh. So it's all about volume. volume. And, the, and, and, and you know, you know, with the maize silage, um, is better than the granite here for me. Mm. Because the reason is uh, with the granite here, it's like if you're not taking proper, you got some dust in it. You know, the, the sheep will have coal and they will cough and stuff. But with the silage, maize silage, you don't have all those problems. So this is the final process or you should be adding something to this? No, you see this one is already been uh, cut into small pieces. You okay. can uh, give it to the sheep like this if you want. Okay. But then we can also uh, leave it that way, you know, for a long period of time. Okay. So for us to uh, protect it or keep it for a long period of time, you need to silage it. The way we do this silage is, this heap you are seeing is a silage heap. Okay. It is silage that is underneath here. The, pro uh, the process is, you compact it, we, 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 comp we compact it, mm -hmm. put some salt on it and some molasses, and then we, we cover with this tapon, like the way you are seeing. This the one way, you are the seeing. Way this one, this. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is a heap of silage. Okay. This is what is underneath here. So okay. we leave it here for four weeks, and then after we start giving it to the sheep. So I will show you the, uh, the silage that is, is, is been done the, uh, for the past four, four weeks. Okay. Yeah, this is how we have this uh, preserve the, the napier grass and the maize as well. Maize, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the same, it's the same, it's same process. process. Yeah, it's the same process. So for how yeah. long for how long can you keep this? You can keep this for two years without problem. This hip here, I can leave this here for two years, it will not have problem. For two years. So it means if you have if you have if you have uh, if you farm enough maize at yeah. the farm, yeah. which means uh, feed will not be a problem anymore. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. You can keep this feed for two years, you know. Yeah, definitely. Does it have the same benefits as the ground hay or is it just a... Uh, you, know, you know, the ground hay, if it is well looked after, yes. it's legumes, it has a lot of proteins in it. Okay. It's a very good one. Okay. But the problem is, mm -hmm. if you want to use the ground hay yeah. as how to call it, uh, on a commercial farming, yeah. it's going to be difficult. You know, because imagine if I need like 10,000 bags of ground on here, a bag is costing $900. $900. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, commercially, and, and these things, the amount of space you will need to farm so that you can have enough you know, ground on here for your sheep is no small space. You know, when I'm talking to people, what people need to understand is, you know, I want to have 1,000 sheep minimum. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking that way, you need to come with a solution that can solve that problem. problem. So ground on here is not the solution. So napier grass, is one, one solution. Uh, maize is another solution. So when you uh, harvest it, you know, you use the chaff cutter and then you silage it. So the silage can stay as long as, as uh, up to two years. It wouldn't uh, two, two, two years. get spoiled. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, then that, that's, that's more. So how, how much of uh, this silage do you have right now? Uh, I got some at the back and we see her silaging because we, did, we closed this one yesterday. If you come, uh, if you have come yesterday, you have, you have, 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 have seen the process. Okay. This one was closed yesterday. Okay. Um, the hip at the back there is, is silaged as well. And we see silaging because we're still bringing it. Okay. You know, just that like today is Sunday. We didn't, uh, we didn't do anything on the silage, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll show you the silage. Come on, come and have a look. Uh, the one that is ready. So at the moment, that's what we are giving to the sheep. Okay. You know, so you see all this you see, you see is a heap of silage. Okay. So underneath here is silage as well. Okay. So this is the one. You see, this is the silage. As you can see, okay. you see? It smells nice. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. we put some how to call molasses on it and some salt. So this is what we are giving to the to the sheep. So what, the reason we have this one here and this one, because um, you know, we don't have big trucks to go and do this at the same time. So when we when we uh, do one layer, one good one, we cover it and then we put another one there because we don't want to uh, wait for a lot of days before we close it. It's just like the one we just saw there, we're going to add another one on top of that one as well. So when this one is finished, then we open the one at the, at the, bottom, the bottom and we use that one as well. You know, so all this thing you are seeing here uh, is, is all silage. 
and and the one the hip at the back there and uh, we got some more corns coming in and you can see you see the maize farm and that farm also we're going to use it and uh, bring it over here and silage it as well so basically at the moment all my sheep are, uh, are eating is silage you know it's napier silage or corn silage you know you see I, I could have left this here for two years like this one here mm. i could have left it here for two years it wouldn't spoil up to two years it wouldn't spoil you know, so, but when this one finishes, then we start this one as start well. Start this one. Yeah. For yeah, yeah. that one finish, finish yeah, the yeah. maze Another, at the farm, the farm will be coming as well. You know, so that that's uh, so. What we do uh, once you open it, we finish, you close it down. Because what it doesn't want is to be exposed to air for a very long time. Very long time. Yeah. So we don't allow it to be exposed to air for a very long time. You see, nothing is wrong with it. You know, so you can keep it here for two for uh, two years, up to two years without a problem. Oh. What is next for for Jalas Farm? For the Jalas Farm. What is next is to become one of the biggest maize farmers in the country. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 in Gambia, they, they see me as the biggest sheep breeder in the country. But that's, that's, that's how you are. <laughs> but I've, I've not started. You know, I've not started. And now I know the secret about, about the, the feeding thing. It's easier for me just to expand the farm. You know, but the thing is like, I want to do this as, as, as a business. Um, make enough feed for my farm and for other farmers. And then also farm enough maize so that I can supply the market as well. You know, it's an opportunity. So when there, whenever there is a problem, if you solve it, you make money. So I think it's a problem. I think you can solve it. A kilo of maize at the moment is thirty-six dollars a kilo. I bought maize about a few days ago. I see it three or four days ago. It's thirty-six dollars a kilo. You know. So imagine you know having like hundred hectares, two hundred hectares of maize. Yes, that would, that would be a lot of money. Exactly. And uh, buying a maize uh, right now, you have one of buy four to five maize at this moment. It's like one hundred dollars. Exactly. Which is which is twenty five dollars. Yeah, exactly. You know, the last I saw people are complaining about it on the on the internet, say maize so expensive, it's not being in, uh, imported. It was farmed here, my friend. Don't farm. farm it. <laughs> that's that's it's a question. Simple. Why, why, why can't you? Why can't you farm it yourself? Exactly. Well, you know, you know. It, it, listen, everybody can put some few few maize at home and okay. stuff. You know, I ain't gonna complain about how expensive maize are. Of course, I got maize. Listen, you know, you know, Gambia we got one concept. People see themselves as, oh, I'm not a farmer. I was not born a farmer. Oh. Nobody was born as a farmer. People choose to do it. You know. I, Okay, me, I was, my, my parents were farmers, you know, definitely. So I, I, I was, I was, I was, um, I was raised with family money and everything. I'm proud of it and I'm proud of my parents, you know, definitely. It was an honest work, you know. So I have, I have so I'm so proud of, I'm super proud of my parents, you know. You ask anybody in our neighborhood, they will say to you, ah, these people, when they don't farm, they don't eat. You know, to me, to hear that make me proud of my dad. That, that's, that's a friend. Exactly, you know. You know, there was this guy, uh, one day we were talking and he wanted to show me that uh, life has changed and everything. He said, oh, God, shut, shut up, you know, you forget when you are young, if you don't, if you don't farm, you don't eat. Yeah. I said, Alhamdulillah. You don't farm, you, you know? don't eat. So, you know, I said, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> he didn't say, you know, my father was a thief. When he, when he, he, steal, he didn't say to me, my father is so steal. And he didn't say to me, my father was, having, was getting paid little money and he did all those things because we, everybody knows that he stole the money. He, he said, said if he didn't farm, farm he doesn't eat. eat. But yes. Alhamdulillah, he didn't stop. He used to eat all year round. <laughs> <laughs> because you farm. Exactly. You know? Yes. So this is something that I was, I found. You know, that's why maybe when I go into it, it's easy for me to have the passion in it. Because when I came here to do these things, it was all about animal feed. I wasn't seeing nothing. Let, let me have enough feed for my yeah. animal. And I don't want to sell things I don't have to sell. That was the drive force behind it. So, but when I came in here, I started these things. You know, the passion just started coming in. And now, I look at it, you look at the farm, I look at everything, I say to myself, come on, it's an opportunity. Let's solve the problem. Let's make money. I'm inviting everybody to come and make money. <laughs> yeah, let's come and, come and make money. And you know the thing with, with, with maize farming? It's just at most three months. You know? Yeah. No, three months is the best thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the you process of the farming, it's just probably one month. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. less than a month. It, I know, so... Where as far as you have the land and you have the equipment, exactly. you have a little bit of capital. You know, you know? The process of the farming itself is it's like a month. Yeah, it's like you know, one month. The rest is just to wait for. For for, for it's just like that. What we are we not doing anything? Just waiting for <laughs> waiting for harvest. We, we're just here. Um, I'm how to go trying to, to stop the monkeys from coming, coming in and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. We're not doing anything. The wind is done. Everything is done. We're just oh. waiting for harvest. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So 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 definitely, I will encourage people mm -hmm. to invest in the farming. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you are a Gambian, you are a friend of the Gambia, come and invest in the farming. 
you know, because definitely agriculture is a virgin area in this country. Uh, it doesn't matter how much amount, how much maize you produce. There are people that they buy it all because it is, it's needed. You know, we have poultry farmers here. All poultry feed need maize. We have animal, animal farmers here. They all need maize. You know, so why can't we take that opportunity? No, we, let, let's just stop saying the decabita pass nahari. You know, decabita you know, <laughs> difficult. My friend, let's stop saying that, please. Let's do something about it. I think it's enough of the complaints. You know, we should do something about it. You know. Yeah, because yeah. I believe in one thing, nobody's going to solve your problem apart from yourself. You have a problem, think about how to solve it. If you have any more people, man, uh, sorry, no, no, they ain't no, going to no. come. Yeah, yeah. They ain't going to come. Look at these things. If I were waiting for the government to solve my problem, will they give me this farm? No, no. they will not. They will not provide the feed for they, you. Exactly. And, yeah. when, when I was in having feed, I was selling my seed. They didn't come and say, oh, okay, we give you feed. No, they don't even know about it. I was the only person who was feeling it. So and you have I, to look for a solution. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so it's either you complain or you do something about, something it. about it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.